What is hooey? Balderdash. That simple. <laughs> it is uh, shenanigans, l l you know, literary shenanigans. It's a bunch of claptrap. It's a bunch of silliness, Dude. which is what it is. I mean, there's nothing in here of any substance. You know, you're just walking around and you think of something stupid and uh, it makes you laugh. You know, Martin Luther King Jr.'s worst speech ever. I mean, that's a funny thought. He probably did have one really bad, one speech of his was the worst one he ever did, by some measure. And it probably was nowhere near as clumsy as the one I've written for him. But, you know, it's a funny thought. And uh, there's not many places to put that thought, except a book like this. He doesn't observe Tuesdays. He wears a watch he smashed on purpose at exactly 12 o'clock. As a result, he famously missed his own birthday by three months. He's had the same assistant for 10 years, his cat, Rodolfo. He pays Rodolfo in crickets. His East Village apartment has been condemned for cricket infestation three times in six years. He reads the Bible in Aramaic to himself through a bullhorn every night. It's, <laughs> it's the perfect mix of the old and the new, he reports. The artist has been baptized, circumcised, exercised, and bathed in the Ganges, all within a hectic month of self-discovery, though he now calls all religion too literal to be believed. He has three children by four women whom he has never met. <laughs> he adopted a man older than himself, whom he affectionately dubbed his grandbrother, and with whom he trades birthday cards three times a year. He claims to hate all drawings. He votes Republican and claims to... I thought, you know, people are probably going to read this on the toilet, so we should write a warning to not read it on the toilet. But it's only for ladies. Ladies mustn't read this on the toilet. Men, take it. Let's get to work. Do you think this will jo enter the canon of uh, good toilet literature? Oh yeah, for sure. I think for the toilet, this is high literature. This is like uh, Flannery O'Connor for the toilet. I, I mean it. It's a good. It's a, it's. You know one reason about it. <clears throat> it? It's not a long book, but you can't read it all at once because it will just get. It's like eating a whole tub of ice cream at once. You know, it just doesn't have any flavor after you eat the first six scoops. So you should just eat two pieces at a time and enjoy them and then put it down and then get two more good laughs or more than two laughs. But you know what I mean? It's, it's too rich with goofiness to, uh, to sit and read the whole thing. I think it becomes meaningless when you do that. What is the longest you've ever read on the toilet? <sighs> well, see, when my kids were little, the toilet becomes this, uh, it's a safe place where you can go and not help. Otherwise your wife, the husband or the wife is like, you gotta help me, help me here, help me. But if you're on the toilet, you're working, you're busy. So it's the only place in the house where you can go and be left alone. So, and people are like, well, he's at work, you know, he's doing his business. So, so it does become a place where you hide out. And so I probably sat for up to 45 minutes reading books, because I do love to read. There's one in here that I, that I really, really... You were really heard. appalled by. Oh. Uh, and you were here. appalled. You adored it, and you were appalled. Which one? Uh, I really liked the manifesto. Yeah, my manifesto is a good one. Crazy and good. The interesting thing about this one is the guy, the guy threatens not to kill anyone, but he threatens, his threat is that he will remain uh, a part of society and die of, of old age. And that's how he will exact his revenge. <laughs> and that's how he will teach everyone his lesson. He's mad at technology, but mostly because of the new iPhone. He's mad at the infrastructure of society, but mostly because of the pothole. His belt is too long, and that's bothering him. And he likes the Electoral College. He thinks it's... He likes it for the right reasons, because it's meant to equalize uh, the vote in America. It's actually, he likes it for the reasons that the Founding Fathers put it in place. And then he, he declares that he will uh, participate in society quietly until he dies of old age. But all in capitalized letters and crazy talk. His, 
His voice reminds me also of like the the internet review, like yeah. The review. Yeah, it is kind of like the internet reviewer piece in here. It's just a person ranting, you know, and being too familiar, overly familiar, and being very uh, and having a lot of attitude. Does this whole culture kind of make you lick your chops as a comedian? I don't know. You know, I don't think people are any dumber or crazier than they were 30 years ago or I mean, people voted for Nixon twice I mean it's the same it's more crazy when people do logical things like that doesn't make any sense when people vote Obama in you know by a majority that's like really there's that many people thinking clearly how did that happen